Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I'll tell you, the accepting mean of angel is messenger and the accepting mean of destiny is to make a firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, today's episode is a special edition about intuition and a compilation of insightful moments from three inspiring past guests. Lee Rausa, Christine Gold, and Christy Waters Forsyth, as we explore the wisdom of intuition. Now, if you don't met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your path, find your life purpose, and create your future to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on your next steps and take charge of your destiny so that you can fill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guide meditation and or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests or myself. Now, this episode today brings together some of the best clips and practical guidance from my conversations with these wonderful previous guests creating a powerful resource to help you understand and connect more deeply with your intuition. Now, although Lee, Christine and Christy won't be joining us live, this episode includes a guided meditation from Christy to support you in aligning with your inner guidance. And of course, before we get into this week's show, I want to remind you not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as we want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. And we will circle back to any questions or comments that um, get asked uh, during the show or watching the replay. So grab yourself a cup of tea, drink, sit back, relax and enjoy this compilation of some wonderful inspiration. Can recognize our own spiritually and intuition. Sure, Ray. Um, well, let me start with just, I guess, I guess my journey into my own discovery of my own gifts. So um, I'm a light worker, indigo, uh, ancient one that's come to return to planet Earth to help the Earth shift into the next dimension. So uh, what that means um, is, you know, it's like... Um, or let me back up a little bit. <laughs> uh, I've always been intuitive. Um, I did not know I was always intuitive until I um, actually um, went to massage school and that um, really open, started to open me up into what energy was, what, um, you know, what healing was all about. Um, it really helped me the helped me along the journey of, in my own healing. Uh, but I also discovered quickly when I touched people, I would pick up on information. Um, as a child, I was always, always very, very shy. And I recognized later that it was because I was highly empathic and highly intuitive. Uh, and I could feel energy. Um, and looking back through that journey of healing, uh, different reactions through empathy, I didn't realize that I was quite the absorbent uh, person empathically um, and would either react or not understand why I was feeling the way I was feeling, you know? Um, and so I had out-of-body experiences as a very young child. I've had uh, experiences with the star beings as a very young child. Um, I've even had experiences before ma massage school where I would be taken on journeys and spiral through galaxies and be taken um, out um, to later understand that I was, I guess, in a way, time traveling or receiving likely information that would later download into me or, or download that I would later understand. Um, and then when massage school came along, um, 
I just, well, partly between the intuition, energy work, learning I was touch intuitive, uh, I learned something in massage school that uh, is called three in one concepts. And we learned how to muscle test and go down through the consciousness to find uh, root causes um, of where unconsciously you've stored trauma or memories that are filtering through your conscious present. And so um, I later understood uh, that that also taught me how to access Akashic records um, down to past lives, um, uh, you know, inner child work, all kinds of different stuff, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah you got um, me yeah. here, more Lee here than me. Um, you know, so ask, <laughs> you, you know, uh, ask, you know, the, those those questions about, Sure. You know, if, if, if you're confused about intuition or spirituality or, or anything like that, you know, then, then just ask the question. Oh, there you go. Malik says, is meditation the best way to develop your intuition? I think meditation is a tool for many things, actually. Yes, I started meditating. That's actually how I did start uh, opening up to it, too. Um, I, but I quickly learned I would journey and I learned I could remote view and um, I tend to take off. Um, but um, meditation can also help you ground um, and it can help you learn about yourself. You know, when I started meditating, it's like um, I even saw flashbacks of lifetime. It was like this is where I started opening up my third eye. Um, and it was like coming through like a, a movie reel. I didn't understand it at the moment, but it was actually my first part of my, I guess, opening and awakening. And through the layers of over the years, it's come to understanding. It takes a little bit of time to understand what all that means. But yes, meditation, um, because it does take, it's a different sight. It's a different hearing. It's a different feeling than it is in our physical three-dimensional world and so um but to be in both you know um is key i guess you know uh, because that's where the action is that is where everything manifests through and so you know we connect with our intuition and then we bring that through um and then we create from that place uh so yeah. Uh, but yeah, meditation is a very good tool in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah. I do well with guided meditations usually, um, yeah. but that's just me, <laughs> you know. But but that actually does bring in quite a good point because Malik yeah. here says um, uh, my mind gets distracted easily, and Eric says I'm just coming in. But how would you get out of the way and let intuition really come in? And guided meditation really is a good way of doing that, is is isn't it? Because it gives your chattering left side of your brain something to concentrate on, leaving the way for the right mm -hmm. side of your brain to go bring that information in. Come on in. Absolutely, yeah. Um... I like to tell people this is something I read a long time ago, but it works for me. I think it's it's one of those perceptional things. I think whatever feels good and what you what works for you, I think generally, you know, is good because there's a lot of different ways to do many different things that are not either right or wrong, right? Um, but um, going back to the question. <laughs> um, and I forgot. I'm sorry. I went off in a different direction. <laughs> that 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 that's okay. We were sort of like it was meditation, and then a um, guide meditation to keep the mind on track, rather than you know to let the intuition really come in, rather than oh, letting your everyday stuff get in the way. Right. What I like to tell my clients is a tool that helps me. Um, is to just focus on a vision, and see how long I can hold it. Uh, before I have another thought, you know, or a word of affirmation and just, you know, do a word of affirmation, of course, help, you know, it helps to keep it positive. But um, 
and see how long you can go between thoughts. But there's all kinds of different med types of meditation. You know, there's exercise, there's dance, there's art, there's, um, you know, uh, walking meditation, you know, sometimes running is a meditation for people to get their thoughts out. Um, but it is, I think, very difficult to, um, to quiet the mind, you know, because it's so, it's usually so very busy. So, um, you know, that's what I like to, to do for myself is just focus on a vision and uh, try to hold it as long as I can until my thoughts slow down. Yeah. Um, but I don't uh, do it too much anymore because my intuition is, you know, pretty connected. I don't really need to be quiet to hear what I need to hear. Um, it just comes straight through. Um, but I, you know, it's always good to, you know, for me, meditation would be, you know, a reprieve from being intuitive at this point. Um, so I don't talk to 20 different things that want to talk to me and feel everybody's thoughts, you know. Uh, but to begin with, I think it's a very good starting point. <laughs> Um, yeah. And it teaches you to be still. I started doing chakra meditations is where I started with it. And then things started coming in and, you know, and then I started traveling out. Um, and so for me, it's difficult to not take a journey when I lay down and get quiet, you know. Um, but that's just my own journey with it, I guess. So. Yeah, and it is a yeah. completely different journey for, for, for everyone. You, you know, I, I take people in, you know, I take them into guided meditations and no two people are the same. There are some people that will always fall asleep, but they still get the answers they need. There are some people like yourself that will just go on a completely different journey, but they get the answers they need from that. And there are other people sure. that completely follow the journey and, mm -hmm. and get their answers from that. I mean, Sandy says that she's found listening to brain sync guided meditations work well. Mm -hmm. Oh, the frequency meditations? I, th I think that's what she meant, brain sync guided meditations. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think it depends on how you, you're, you operate, too. If you're more of a structured person, something like reading something or a guided meditation, meditation may work better you know um i'm not a very structured person i'm a very flow i'm just in the flow it makes me good at being able to catch many different things instead of you know i don't think too much about things i guess you know and it is a practice to get your mind out of the way to hear what's on the unseen frequencies <laughs> you know um it's always available we just have to connect with it and I think part of it has to do with belief structures and what we think it is or how it's supposed to be. Some people get caught up in that. You know, I think it's individual as well. Everybody operates and their intuition works different, you know. Um, and so I think there's a component to that too. Um, and so it just feels like if you're, you know, to me, if you're more structured, you may enjoy, you know, something more structured may work better for somebody. Uh, that needs something like that, you know, um, and yeah. it certainly is a good starting point. I just have a hard time not taking off, you know. That's just me. <laughs> the, well, if you've been doing um, it since, if you've been doing it since you were a child, you know, it's it's yeah. it's it's, it's kind of like an ingrained thing because obviously a lot of stuff that we did as a child uh, mm -hmm. will it will affect us now. And as you as you said, you know, when you look back. Um, at your childhood now you kind of think oh that's why they do this now because of that when I do that you know I look back on my children and go, oh so that's why I was in I like kaleidoscopes so much because of geometry and you and, you know and it's not till you're later so quite often it is a good idea to look back at when you're a child what you're where you're in how you got your imagination working and that what things did you do as do it do as a child to get your imagination working and mm -hmm. falling and if you start connecting with that again you've got a very good chance of allowing your intuition to come in because you're connecting with that child thing again that when you were free to do it sure sure yeah um and yeah a lot of times we're picking up on we're actually already doing it we just don't recognize it 
you know what I mean? It's just like we're already feeling information. We're already having thoughts that come in that are actually guidance, but we think they're, own th they're our own thoughts when they're actually guidance, you know? Uh, we just don't know how to recognize it because it's in our own head and our own thinking, right? And, um, you know, it's always, we're more sensitive to it than we realize, you know? It's happening anyways. <laughs> um, it is about getting out of the way, though, and to let go of any belief structures, I think, about what it's supposed to look like for you and just allow the space to let spirit bring that in for you. And um, it can look like many different ways. You know, it's good to sometimes write things down and see what things repeat or just ask spirit to confirm things that you think or something. And, um, you know, it does take practice, you know, <laughs> in learning a uh, discernment of what's what, uh, but, um, you know, and then visions. I mean, visions can only take you so far too. It's good to have everything open, uh, but they are um, just one piece to putting a bigger picture together when it comes to interpreting um, your intuition and what a message means, you know? Um, and so, they give you a picture, but you still have to eventually open other places uh, to be able to interpret everything um, fully, you know, but that's for me. I think, you know, usually most people have, uh, are more drawn to one or the other uh, naturally. Um, I think most people are most connected with empathy, I think more than anything. Um, to start with, because we all feel each other, you know? We can all feel when a room feels intense um, and feels, you know, um, you know, like you can cut the energy with a knife or, you know, yeah. some people thrive off that and are high energy mm -hmm. and they, you know, they feed off the energy and get really excitable, you know? Um, some people shut down. It just depends on how you operate, I think. and. And then it goes back into, you know, where your blocks are with, uh, you know, maybe you grew up with a family that didn't understand this stuff, <laughs> you know, Mentally I mean, Ill. you know, and then we've got our social issue with that too. And projections and judgments, which makes people even revert more. And it just adds more trauma on top of the trauma, but then you know, again, it's all in their teachers. And if you take it with them, then you can free a lot of that up anyways, you know, because uh, the work yeah. is within, you know, um, and they're just reflections of things we need to to work on, right? Yeah. Um, so, so, so anyway. So, so Malik has got a question and then, um, we're, sure. and then, and then we're going to see what, what you, what your cards want to want to give a an overall uh, um, view of that you know, that your cards are want to want to give to everyone watching. So Malik says, "What's the best way to connect with your spirit guides?" Hmm. Well, you know, the best place is to just ask. <laughs> you know, start asking. At this point, for me, I do. I mean, I definitely ask before I do any work with anybody. You know, I ask. You know, just ask them. Um, but I don't necessarily have to ask them for them to give me information anymore, you know? Um, but I always ask when I work with people, so don't get that confused, I guess. But um, it's just, just ask. It's it's being connected, you know? What do they say? It's like we think we have to be in control of everything and we have to, to, to do it on our own. That's another program in itself, you know? Um, it's a co-partnership with spirit and you know, to become the conduit for that, you know, that's our job is to, to bring it into creation, you know, uh, but we have to learn to listen and we do have to ask, you know, we forget to ask, <laughs> you know, so just ask and then, you know, ask them to help you connect with the message, you know, and then ask for confirmation of, you know, if you're on the right track or not. Some people like to write things down. I feel like for whatever reason, I'm not sh don't remember your name, but like writing down might uh, be a good tool. You know, I like to channel through writing because um, it just allows me to flow, but you just can't 
think of, just don't think about it. Just whatever comes, it doesn't really matter. Um, what it says, you know, per se, uh, you might be surprised what comes through if you just let go, you know, um, and it just takes a practice and it takes understanding yourself and understanding spirit. So, but I just ask, yeah. Yeah, which which is really good. Um, and as Malik, as Malik said, because Malik was the one who asked that question, and she said, "Agree with yeah. you about social schizophrenia," which is interesting because um, she's actually a mental health social worker and wants to integrate spirituality and mental health together, which is brilliant that you're that somebody is actually looking at that connection b b between the between the both, rather than just chucking drugs straight down somebody's throat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm sure yeah so I, I know i know the cards have sort of like been going we want to come out and say something <laughs> around and that so so normally at this point of the show i normally say um you know that i normally and do. if you're watching this on my youtube channel then give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can get um, updates on all uh, recordings so christine why don't you tell us more about how intuition saved your life and then how we can find our own gifts to develop through our own intuition. Uh, intuition is who we are. It's our soul's purpose, our soul's calling. Um, we've had it since birth. We were born perfectly. At least that's what I believe in. But uh, somewhere along the way, you know, programmings, beliefs, uh, traumas, uh, whatever's happened out throughout your life, especially for me, I don't know about anybody else, but I always felt like I didn't belong. I always felt like the black sheep of the family. <laughs> um, and I didn't know what to do with all these emotions, all this energy around me, all of the messages that I was picking up from the other side, from my angels, my guides, my loved ones. So it, it kind of, it, it turned into depression. It turned into anxiety. It turned into um, me looking for externals, whether it was drugs, and that could be food, that could be alcohol, that could be sex, that could be anything. I mean, <laughs> there's so much out there. Um, yeah. And like I said, that health scare, that really scared me. But then I also found uh, uh, one of my mentors, she did a video about anxiety and depression and how it is your intuition. Um, you also may be psychic, you are an empath, um, you're a medium, meaning you can talk to loved ones on the other side. And it's, it's coming out in, in that way because you don't know how to calm your body, yourself, your mind, the whole 360, mind, body, soul, spirit, um, so I, I did training with her. So I am a certified medium. I don't like labels no. <laughs> or, you know, certificates. I mean, it's, it's great that you have that, um, but to walk the walk and talk the talk or, or is what I believe in. Um, actually doing the work, getting your hands dirty, um, trusting, trusting the whole process. Um, I think that that's why the depression and anxiety took over is I did not trust who I was. I did not trust my intuition. I did not trust that I am unco unconditional love. Because that, that's what we are. We are born perfectly, like I said, and somewhere along the way, we decided, we were told, it was ingrained, it was beaten into us through messing, messaging, family, whatever it happens to be that we are not worthy. I think worthy is the biggest thing that I'm working on right now, but um, it it's establishing a routine of going back to um, self-care and self-love. They're interchangeable. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I believe in. And I love myself so much that when I get up, I, there are certain things that I do every morning before I start my day. And if that means I'm getting up at five in the morning or 4.30 or four, that's when I get up. Um, and it includes a dream journal, which I highly recommend, a gratitude journal, meditation, exercise, whatever it may be, getting outside in nature, eating well, so that's um, really, thank, thank you thank very you. much. You know, it, you know, please, you know, it's like, please do share this video whether you're watching live or at, at a later day. Um, 
you know, because it can help it can help a lot more people. So if someone is thinking, well, how to, you know, you're, you're saying that everyone's got intuition. How do I find my intuition? How how do I get my intuition? What, what would you sort of like suggest to people? Uh, well, I suggest with definitely meditation and a lot of, even myself, being a bit slightly A-type personality, my mind wants to be like, no, that's my ego, wants to, no, no, we're not doing that. I don't even know how to do that. I, it sounds dumb. It sounds silly. It sounds like something I wouldn't want to do. <laughs> you, you go through those conversations, but I always say start with one minute. If you can find a spot for one minute where you shut everything off and no, you do not have to sit in, you know, the, that sitting position, I lay down. So if you want to lay down, lay down. The whole idea is to let go. Let yeah. go. And, the, and then as you go the next day, two minutes, the day after that, three. And if you want to increase by a minute every day and work yourself up to half an hour, I know some people that do 60 minutes. I know some people that split it, do it in the morning and then at night before they go to bed, which is an amazing way to start and end your day with intention with intentional type of meditation. Um, start with that. Have more fun. Yeah. Be more childlike. If you haven't blown up any bubbles since you were five, why not now? If you have not ran through the grass in, in barefoot. Or roll down a hill. Yes, roll down a hill. Um, play in the water. You know, I watch the kids out front after it rains. They're running in through the puddles. And I'm like, I remember doing that. And we loved it. It was so freeing. So stuff that, go back to your childhood and go, okay, what did I like to do? What was fun? What was like, wow. Just awe. Shock and awe, I guess, is because then you're raising your vibration. The more your vibration is raised, the easier it is to connect to source to that source energy um, and then play games. Um, instead of like, say you drive the same way to work and you and all of a sudden you get left. You're like, why am I thinking left? That's your intuition. It's very subtle. It's quiet. It's positive. It is. It reminds me of like a butterfly. It's like, you see a butterfly you're like, Oh, what's that? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm going to go left. And then you find out that there was this big accident or, you avoided a, a terrible accident. That's your intuition. It's there to guide you, to guard you, to help you. It's like your spidey senses. It's it's a protection. And I think a lot of us have forgotten about that. Yeah. We yeah. just do. We don't, we just do. We're not being in the moment. Be more present. I like to play games where I'll write down a name or put um, playing cards in envelopes and I'll just and I'll try and, and use my intuition and figure out what the color is, what the number is. Okay. Um, if somebody's about to call you, don't look and just go, okay, that's my auntie. And whoa, look at that, it is. Or you were thinking of someone and they call, that's again. And numbers, repeating numbers, huge for me. I, I don't know about anybody else, but I see triple one, triple two, triple three. And I always say thank you because I know it's it's messages for me. And then there's the feathers, the the animals, um, coins. There's so much out there. Once you start looking and being curious, it's just like you're saying hello. Please bring me more. Yes. Yeah. Um, Come on, I'm full like now because we do a lot of mindless things: eating, driving. Yes. Yeah, we, we, working. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, we do we do a, we do a, we do an awful lot of, of of that in our lives. So oh hello, we've got the cat joined us. Oh, <laughs> oh the cat. Well, actually cats are the original Reiki masters. Mm. Yeah, anyways, that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well my my cat my cat's really good actually she is we actually shared a past life together in egypt okay um, and when i had people um around here um uh, for meditation or afternoon tea of the angels when they come downstairs if someone needs that extra bit of healing or or something she'll literally go and um, jump on their lap yes 
Oh, coming up, come on, kitty. Oh, yeah, she, she's looking at me, so she may come up. So, I've got to put a clock on my lap because obviously, she's got claws. And oh, yes, so many scratches from where she sat on my lap, and she's gone, Oh, this is nice and comfortable. Yes, <laughs> and that's okay. So, I'm sitting here like this if you want to come up. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, anyway, where were we yes. going back to in intuition? Yeah, intuition. Um, and for me, I, I well, I, I'm an empath. So, you know, I get a lot of people are like, I just can't be in crowds and I don't like loud noises and scary movies. And people keep saying I'm so sensitive and quit being baby. And why are you crying so much? I got that as well. I'm like, hello, there's nothing wrong with you. You are a sensitive soul and, um, you know, you should be, honored and cherished so please do that for yourself and then find other people like yourself and bring them in because you're going to be like you know it's like it's a vibe you just right away you know i'm like oh i know you i feel you i am you so i'm i'm all about empaths i i, I talk about um how to protect yourself just be that energy and if you're finding situations are too much remove yourself if yeah. you're around certain people, and that includes family members and even your friends, <laughs> um, if you're feeling worse, then you need to check in and go, okay, I there's something I need to honor myself and make sure that I'm protecting myself and being in protection um, first. And then once you've got your energy figured out, you don't have to protect yourself anymore. You are, yeah. you set the tone, you're the energy. Um, yeah, because there are unfortunately there are energy. I call them energy vampires. I'm sure we've heard of that and, and yeah. narcissists um, and they love us. They know how to get whatever they want out of us. It's recognizing them right away, like being very. And when you tap into that intuition, it's like radar, like photo radar. You're like, boom, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. 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 And, you know, we, you know, we're talking about intuition and um, we were to, you know, and we were sent to them, obviously, Cindy. Um, it's very interesting. Kind of, we were just talking about this too. <laughs> and uh, Carla's gone, uh, yeah, crazy good stuff. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And, I love uh, that. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's really the way intuition, you know, kicks in when you don't actually think um, that it's about or you may not have anything. Um, to do with it so anyone who's watching if you've um so cindy carla if you've got a question you want to, to connect ask them, with my or... own intuition learning to honor my own intuition and learning how to teach other people how to connect with and honor their intuition and so i've been on this journey for quite some time and so for me where that started was in childhood and i would have experiences with what I now know to be angels with these interactions and these conversations and sort of these voices that would just kind of help guide me throughout situations <laughs> in childhood and uh, these magical little interactions that I would have. And it took me a while to understand that not everybody had those experiences or knew what the heck I was talking about when I would mention that. Um, but I, I, I had this awareness and so this transitioned into at some point me understanding that maybe not everybody had this experience and uh, at some point that sort of settled down and I wasn't having that as much but I always throughout childhood intuitively would still connect with people I always have been an em empath where I've just understood people's feelings and what it is that they needed from me and how I could best help them and so that was kind of always present and then for, uh, as a teenager, I started to have more experiences again with that and um, had some experiences with angels and, and started to get interested in fine tuning my own intuition. And at the time that was uh, reading a ton of Sylvia Brown books. I was obsessed. 
<laughs> with Sylvia Brown. I loved her. I thought she was the best and I just really connected with that. But what I found with uh, connecting with my intuition through that process was that I was opening up not just to connecting with the angels and connecting to my spirit guides, but I was also opening to other energies that were more scary. So uh, for me, you know, I, I started to see lots of activity and lots of stuff happening in my room at night. And I started to um, have, I would wake up in the morning with people standing around my bed, or I would wake my parents up like screaming in the middle of the night and things like that. So again, I kind of shut that intuition down. And I just said, that's it. I'm done. I'm not reading these books. I'm not connecting in this way because this is really scary. And I don't want to do this. Yeah. And uh, so so this kind of and then I sort of led a pretty regular life for a while, you know, always again, continuing to connect intuitively in terms of helping people. In fact, this is where I became a, a licensed mental health counselor. This is where I went to school for okay. psychology, always understanding that I've wanted to help people and was meant to help people. So I. Graduated from school, I was working as a counselor for years, and some situations happened that sort of triggered and opened me up again. And I decided that this time around, I was going to open up and I was going to be in charge of the way that I intuitively connected. And this is, by the way, for anybody who's looking to connect with their intuition, this is really where the power lies, right? Is in being able to set boundaries around the things mm. that you're experiencing and saying, hey, I don't want to experience people standing around my bed. <laughs> when yeah. in the morning. That's scary. Please don't do that. And, and, and simply by setting that intention and putting that out there, you can create boundaries around your intuition. And um, I had remembered I was actually afraid to see angels again because I had remembered that Sylvia Brown had talked about her experiences with them and that they were these faceless, faceless, creatures and they were huge and to me that just sounded really scary so I started yeah. to set boundaries around that and say no please like if you're going to appear to me please have a face <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> always helps yeah yeah and, and you know what when I set those boundaries it allowed me to really start to open up again and it allowed me to see angels with faces you know I started almost immediately to see angels again with people and and to reconnect with those energies and to feel them with people and I started to physically see auras around people and it became really clear that I wasn't going to be able to do traditional mental health counseling anymore yeah you know that I was I was going to need to make some changes and the way that intuition works is a lot of times when it's time for us to make some changes we start to get these little urges right like oh maybe i i should do this maybe i should do that so i was starting to do that i was starting to do things like get my certification in hypnosis and um starting to explore the possibility that i might at some point do something different than this counseling job that I had done for years that I had loved for years and I was starting to explore the possibilities around that but I wasn't moving very quickly with that and or as quickly as my guides and my angels maybe mm -hmm. wanted me to move with that so what happens when we are not listening to those subtle little urges is I find that we tend to get more uncomfortable mm. Um, and, and, and so this is kind of when, um, enter, you know, um, a, a new boss who, who stepped in to offer, uh, the gift of helping to move me out of that job faster than I had intended of making yeah. me <laughs> so uncomfortable, um, in the shifts and the changes that she brought in and with the energy that she brought in that it was like, Wow, okay, this isn't something that I'm going to be sticking around for yeah. that I'm going to be, you know, moving for. And, and so that's kind of how I started to really expand with with my business with clarity and um, got a got an office and and started to do that part time at first and and then um, got a really clear intuitive message that it was time for me to go full time. And what was interesting is. The thing about intuition is it's not always logical, mm. right? And so logically, that wasn't the best time. I was 
really miserable at that work because I wasn't able to honor the gifts that were coming through and I wasn't able to just be who I was and um, you know acknowledge the angel that was standing in the room with my clients well, and I if, wanted if they um, uh, you, you know they they're not sure you know what what's the what's the quick way that someone can check you know can connect to their in intuition because because we know that everyone's got it but there are people that go but I don't connect with it no matter how I try I don't connect mm -hmm. you know um there's a lot of a, a lot of uh, ways to connect with our intuition and I think that that's really important for people to keep in mind because what happens is we will have an interaction with somebody that we will deem as highly intuitive right and then that becomes the model for what highly intuitive looks like Right. So people have a conversation with me and I'm like, hey, I talk to angels and I interpret these messages. And their assumption is, oh, to be intuitive, I have to see an angel standing in front of me or I have to connect. And I think what's really important is that we're very careful about our expectations about what intuition feels like or what it is and, and how we're defining that for ourselves. And that we are allowing ourselves to explore what that looks like for us individually, because there's so many ways that we experience intuitive information. You know, we uh, tend to experience it through the five senses and all of us have different gifts with that. I always say, you know, for starting with your intuition, really start to focus on tuning into the body because the body is our greatest intuitive tool. So even if you set the intention to connect more with your intuition and then you take a few minutes every single day just to sit and close the eyes and have an awareness of what's going on in the body. It's just kind of bringing that awareness into the body. Oh, you know, I feel this little itch on my leg and and I, I um, you know, this hair is on my face and that feel I feel that and I feel my legs crossed and, and things like that. Just having that awareness is a really nice pathway into tuning in. But the body is a great, great pathway for that and, and noticing how your body is responding in different situations. When you're interacting with a certain person, does your body feel up and light and good? Or do you feel like you have a pit in your stomach? Or do you <laughs> yeah. feel really anxious? Or do you feel, do you leave interactions feeling really angry with somebody? Or, or, and just kind of noticing how you're picking up on that. And that's one of the ways that we can intuitively connect. And then, you know, other people will experience it through vision. And people expect that you know, that everybody who is clairvoyant sees angels with their physical eye or auras with their physical eye. And you and I were talking, and one of the ways mm. that you experience that um, is more, you know, with your mind's eye. Yeah. And, and feeling yes, the energy. it's the knowing, yeah, and feeling. Uh, right. And, and, and that's the thing is I, I think a lot of people are having this expectation, have this visual image outside of ourselves and it's going to be this really mind-blowing powerful knock you on your butt experience and really what it mostly looks Okay. You know, so learning to kind of tune into like those little things that just sort of pop into the mind randomly or or Oh, you you've you've often... to me. <laughs> oh, can I... oh, can you yes. hear me now? I can, I, can, I, can, okay. I can hear you now. Okay, so I was saying <laughs> even in terms of Claire audience, which is the hearing piece of that, um, so oftentimes, again, it's not like this voice that people hear outside of themselves, not this disembodied voice that's telling them what to do or giving them psychic messages. Or I mean, sometimes it is. Sometimes people have those experiences or that's the way they their gift connects for them. But oftentimes, it's a thought that runs through your mind that's in your own voice in your mind. Maybe it feels a little different. Maybe it has a little bit of a different feeling than a regular thought that you're having. Uh, but, but sometimes it takes a little time to find fine tune that and connect with what that feels like as well. But a lot of times my point is that we're missing those messages because we have an expectation mm. of what that's supposed to be. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That, that, that makes sense. And, and everyone does um, experience it completely different. Um, in, in, right. it's, the same, it's the same with everything in life. You know, if you, um, I don't know, were to, eat a curry, say, one person will experience it completely different to the other person, even though it's the same curry, 
because that, that's how it is. That's you as a unique individual compared to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's, it's so different for all of us. And, and you know, even um, you get into claircognizance, and which to me is actually a, a, the most direct way that we can intuitively connect. So it's just this, this knowing like you were talking yeah. about. Um, that's really hard to tease out for people sometimes because they're like, I don't know. I don't know how I know that answer. I just know. It just came to me. I just know. And so many people are walking around with this ability to be claircognizant and to connect intuitively in that way. But it's um, it's so just easily accessible in some ways that they don't recognize that they're doing that and that they're having that happen for them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I mean, we'll go back to me with, with that, you know. I'll be busy um, teaching or talking to somebody and I'll just be going nine to the dozen going blah, 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 blah. And, that, and then I go, does that make sense to you? Because that that's all it is. It's just literally the, whatever the, the channeling or whatever. And it just mm -hmm. comes out of my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. It just does. And then, and, and sometimes you're even like, oh, what did I just yeah. say? <laughs> I say half the time I can't remember. <laughs> you know, and I also think that so many of us are delivering messages to other people without even realizing it. We just feel compelled to say something, or it just comes out of our mouth, and um, it turns out to be exactly what that person needed to hear, or what that person needed to tr trigger a response within them. Um, so we're doing it for each other as well. Yeah. Steve, do you want yeah. to go ahead and? Do the meditation. Absolutely. And I'm going to share this because I think that this is a really great place to start when you're wanting to connect with your intuition because, again, that intuition is going to be the roadmap for your life. It's it's showing you the way every step of the way what's going to be for your highest and best good. And, and for me, that meditation is huge and key for opening that up. And, mm. and so this is a meditation that, for me, I think it's really simple that everybody can remember and that takes us into a nice relaxed place very quickly and um, and then we can make those connections to our intuition. Cool. Well, All right. All right. So I'll let everybody just kind of close those eyes and get relaxed. Just letting yourself get comfortable in the space that you're in. Taking a moment to be mindful of the breath. Allowing each and every breath to get a little bit slower, a little bit deeper than the last breath. Inviting in that calm and relaxation. Taking a beautiful few moments for yourself just to relax. And while you allow that breathing to continue to be slow and easy, I want you to imagine a spark of light right there in your heart center, right there where your heart is. And I always like to say that this spark of light is the spark of God, the spark of the divine, the spark of the universe that exists within us. So just noticing that spark And with every slow, deep breath, just imagining that you are expanding that spark throughout the body. Just slowly and easily allowing that light to expand to every cell, every bone, every organ of the body. Completely filling yourself with love light, joy, peace, and healing. I'm just really enjoying this powerful energy that you have created, that has always existed within you. 
And we also want to invite that energy to expand outside of the body so it can continue to grow. Creating a bubble all the way around the body, all the way above the head, all the way below the feet. Completely surrounding you with love, light, joy, peace, and healing. And again, just taking a moment to allow this light to expand, to feel the peace and love connected with this energy. And even to feel gratitude for the ability to access this energy at any given moment, simply through using this visualization. And taking in one more big deep breath. Just enjoying that energy. And bringing that energy back to this room and back to this moment with one, two, three, four, five. Allowing those eyes to open slowly, coming all the way back. Oh, that was lovely. I don't know about. So, how did you find that meditation? Do let us know. And of course, whilst you're coming back, I will pull an oracle card for everyone who's watching this. So what does everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? So, so we have got first light beginning a new cycle. So just top that there for you. So what this card is saying to um, everyone here that's watching is that a new cycle is now beginning, which actually ties in really nicely with the fact that um, Pluto is going back into Aquarius very soon. Um, so, you know, things are beginning to look better now. A new cycle is actually going to be coming into your life. Be prepared for it. Be open to it coming in. Look for that light, for that inspiring, that fun, that beautiful energy that's coming in, because that is going to be the guide to take you to this new cycle where things will be better in your life. So do take the time to actually enjoy and see where you are going to be going. I mean, that is a beautiful, beautiful card. Um, absolute, absolutely uh, lovely. Um, and of course, I hope you enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful. Um, as I know, I definitely have. And it was absolutely wonderful being able to look back on this wisdom and guidance about intuition and, you know, remind you of a few things um, that you may have forgotten. And of course, what I will be doing, I will be putting links to the websites of my three guests in the comments um, and also links to their to the actual shows that these clips came from. If you want to um, go back and uh, rewatch those shows. And as you can see, things have improved in, um, uh, studio wise since uh, my first since those first early shows. So, you know, so these shows are, um, start back in, uh, well, the show started in 2018, although uh, uh, Lee's show, the earliest one was in 2019. And of course, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, 
but maybe you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 minute video clarity call to see where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free gift to connect with your guides, your angels, PDF, or a future life progression recording, as well as a couple of other free gifts if you want to sign up to my email list. And again, thank you so much for watching. And I'd like to remind you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who want to get who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified of when this show goes live or I post new guided meditations. And remember, every time you um, like, comment, share, subscribe to any of my or my guests' or, um, channels, social media, posts, etc., you really help get our message out there. Um, and you're part of that butterfly effect of bringing this wisdom, this guidance into other people's lives. And I look forward to you all joining me, same time, same place next week. Take care, bye.